Welcome to the Q1 Buck Poll. I'm Tim Hart with my big buck Hoffner. Well, opening day is gone. One of the biggest weekends, Thanksgiving weekend is gone, and we have a lot of deer on the Q1 Buck Poll. Well, I'll tell you what, I certainly think it was an interesting opener. Uh, twice in my life since I've been hunting in southern Michigan, I've not quite seen the fog like I've seen it this time. Well, and the fog extended all the way up. I was in cold water and then two and a half hours up to Lapeer on opening day. Uh, the fog was still there and not a lot of people were seeing deer, but then uh, as the night progressed, about seven o'clock, a lot of deer came in. Yeah, I'll tell you, the weather was warm. I, you go out with your short sleeve shirt on that night, but I, <laughs> I sat from afar, watched my son do some hunting, and Tim, he did the right thing. We had a little buck pass right in front of us. He said, Dad, he's too little. I'm letting it go. That's a good son. There you buck. go. All right, on this week's show, we've got the DNR. They're going to be talking about how to tag your deer uh, with Brandon Keeft. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, they'll take their tag and they'll fold it over. That's not quite the right way to do it. Yeah, I've done it wrong, but I've learned how to do it right. <laughs> That's right. We also are going to be covering opening day at Ray Seas Extreme up in Lapeer, Michigan. Lots of great interviews and what a great event that they put on. I have a chance to talk to Ray Clemens Jr., so that's a lot of fun. And then we've got uh, some bucks, including some interviews from Ray Seas, but also Ali Avra from Quincy. She got a big buck down here. Yeah, it was a great buck, Tim. I watched She uh, is a student at the Branch Area Career Center or Health Academy program. I walked through the door. And I didn't get five steps in the front door and said, oh, Mr. Hoffner, you got to go down and see Allie. She shot a monster. All right. We're going to show you all the bucks right here on the Q1 Buck Poll. Stay with us. Q1 Buck Poll. Michigan's biggest and best buck poll contest. Brought to you by these sponsors who support Michigan's great outdoors. Back here in the Q1 Buck Poll, Tim Hart, Mike Big Buck Hofner. Well, before we talk to the DNR about how to tag your deer when you're out there, we've got some big bucks from around the state. Yeah, Tim, let me start out with uh, Rick Fernberg. He brought in a nine-pointer. His score was 47.12. It comes from Mason, Michigan. Then we had Matthew Moon with a 10-pointer. His score was 47.88. came from Goebbels. Then we had Chris Tyler with a 13-point buck. The score 49 and three-quarters coming from Portage. And remember, you can register bucks and doe all the way through December 31st. Uh, go online and check out a registration location nearest you. Now, here's my interview on how to tag your deer the right way. We're now going to talk about how you properly tag your deer. Brandon Keeft is with us, and he is a conservation officer with the Department of Natural Resources. And we've got a beautiful rack here that we're going to talk about that was taken illegally so don't do that first of all um, but let's talk about the proper way of tagging we've got we've got you know a couple of different ways here and this one you know they just wrapped it around looks you know legal they got their tag on there but that's not quite how it should be sure um, with this first tag the, the biggest issue that we have is we don't want you to wrap it directly around the antler um, one it's on here real tight it's wrapped around itself it's not very readable and also, if you look close enough at it, it's actually not notched or validated. Okay. So, that's not a good way. Well, then here, you know, somebody's got it all just kind of wrapped around. they got a string around that. Wouldn't that be okay? The problem with the second one is uh, there's just a little piece of string holding this on. Uh, if you notice, if you looked really close, the uh, backing where it came out of the machine is still on here. Okay. So, this isn't actually sticking to anything. So, it only takes just a little bit for this to break loose and this tag to be gone. Um, also, this tag's not notched or validated either. And without the sticky stuff being uh, peeled off this, um, it's not firmly attached to the deer. And we require it to be notched and securely att attached to the deer. Um, otherwise, this tag could actually be slipped off here. I was going to say, you could just go like this, a little string deal. Oh, I'm going to go get myself another deer. Yeah, that could end up getting you a ticket one way or another. <laughs> Don't do that is what we're talking about. Okay, exactly. so now let's talk about the proper way uh, to tag the deer then. Uh, this other one is a pretty good example of how we want to see the deer tagged. This one is um, using a little zip tie. Uh, you can use a piece of cord or... Uh, a piece of wire or this zip tie is, is a great use and you just wrap the you peel the tag all the way off you put the um, tag stick the tag 
on itself through the zip tie here, mm -hmm. and then fasten the zip tie to the deer, mm -hmm. and then just make sure you validate the date, the month, the sex of the animal, and how many points it is so that we know that this tag goes to this deer. And it only takes a few seconds to do it the right way, doesn't it? Correct, yeah, this can take less than a couple of minutes to do. Or if you don't do it the right way, and let's say you took the deer illegally, then it's gonna have another little tag on it, which is, <laughs> that's an evidence tag, isn't it? That's correct, this is uh, one of our evidence tags, and this deer was illegally taken, and it's a shame, because it's a quite a large deer, and this is what every legal hunter wants to take. Right, exactly right. And again, if you run across uh, somebody out there not doing it the right way, uh, the Report All Poaching Hotline, uh, we've had that on our show before, uh, you can make that call. But again, we want to do it the right way. Tag your deer the right way. Get your license, get everything legal, have fun when you're in the outdoors. Now, what we've got is we've got a smaller deer back here, and I'm going to have you show me, step by step, the proper way to tag, all right? Sounds good. Okay, good deal. Okay. This is a basic archery license. It's a demonstration license, and we're gonna use it to uh, show you how to tag a deer. Okay. Okay, the first step you're gonna wanna do is, uh, usually every hunter's gonna have their knife that they're gonna use to field dress their deer. You take that knife. Um, usually the easiest way to do this is to get over by a tree or something. Uh, it's kind of a hard surface that you can notch out this tag, so. In this case, we're dealing with a five point. So you're gonna find the male portion, which is the sex of the animal. Cut that out. In this case, we're gonna use the month of October. Cut that out. Use the zero. So again, it's just a quick little simple process to do this. Correct. So this is going to signify October the 5th. It's a male deer. It's going to be a five point. It's got three on the left side and two on the right side. So now that you have all that notched out, you can put your knife back away for a second here. Get a zip tie out. In this case, you don't want to stay close to this side of the zip tie. So you're going to peel the back off. You talked about that. Correct. You're going to peel it off, stick it in a pocket here. You're going to securely put this basically, basically on the middle of your tag and then it will fold onto itself so that you can still see all the notching that we already did. Then you're gonna take that tag, you go over to your deer. Okay, then when you get back over to your deer, you're gonna take the tag that you just secured to the uh, zip tie, get to a point on the antlers, hook the zip tie up, now you've got it securely attached. You can cut the excess off here and that tag's not gonna go anywhere. All right, so Brandon, really this deer was for demonstration purposes. I mean, it's all you know caped out and that sort of thing. When should I put the tag on though? Good question. Um, a lot of hunters wonder when the appropriate time is. Actually, right when you come up on the deer and you realize that it's dead, um, that's when you're gonna wanna put your tag on. Tag even before you field dress your deer. And because, why? That's just the proper time to do it? Uh, you want to tag it before you field dress your deer, one, because you're not going to get any blood on the tag. It might not be readable that way. Um, you can securely get it on there, get it on the deer first, then you can uh, field dress it. And then that way when you're, if anywhere during that process you're encountered by a conservation officer or anyone else, they know that you've uh, already legally taken this deer and there's no question in their mind uh, as to you doing it properly. Great information for tagging your deer and again, do it properly when you're out there. Uh, everything you do, get your license on time, you know, then tag your deer and then have fun this hunting season. Brandon Keefe's been with us. He's a conservation officer with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. I'm Tim Hart. You're watching the Q1 Buck Poll. 
Time now for our sponsor spotlight here on the Q1 Buck Pole. We're at DNR Sports Center in Kalamazoo. Randy Van Dam is with us. Randy, welcome to the show. Hi, Tim. Now, a lot of people know you for uh, fishing because your brother's a world-class bass fisherman, mm -hmm. Kevin Van Dam. But you guys take to the woods, too. And in particular, we're talking about guns and ammo and all different array of things. Oh, absolutely. We carry a full line of all the products so we can get out there ourselves and take care of our customers. So we have uh, shotguns, rifles, muzzleloaders, handguns of all types. You name it, we have it. Is there anything in particular that stands out when we talk about uh, you know the shotguns this year? Is there one gun that say, hey, this is this is one that's everybody's looking for? Well, I tell you, you know, we we have all of them. We have the Benellis, we have the you know the Remingtons and their new stuff, and they have a lot of nice stuff. But you know, I think the muzzleloader stuff has been kind of where some of the excitement is. You know, the new CVA stuff, the Thompson Center Encore. We've got a deal on some encores right now for four ninety nine. You know, but uh, you know the the, the for deer hunting purposes, which we cover, you know, that muzzle loaders are so accurate and, and deadly, you know, downrange that a lot of guys are switching to that and then they can use them for both seasons. Well, again, more time in the woods and that's exactly. what it's really about. All right, Randy, what about accessories, too, to go along with everything? Oh, we have it all. We have the tree stands, we have the blinds, we have the calls and scents, uh, clothing, top, head to toe, hats, under armor, you know, the scent lock, scent blocker. Uh, underwear. <laughs> we got it all. We put your head to It's like that great hat you got there. <laughs> I got a great looking hat right, right. now. And uh, in the gun department, I want to go back to that real quick, you do have uh, layaway along with, you have gift certificates people can buy. Oh, we do. We have layaway. We have a full array of uh, gift certificates uh, of any size you, that you want. Uh, layaway six months, allows you to put some payment terms on, get you what you want, when you want. So. All right, DNR Sports Center is our sponsor spotlight today here on the Q1 Buck Bowl. Tim Hart with Randy Van Dam. Randy, thanks for being with us. All right, thank you. All right, we got more coming up. Stay with us. Remember, you can also register your buck or your doe here at DNR Sports Center. Opening day is always an exciting day here in the state of Michigan. Uh, it's on all the news reports, all the newspapers report on it, radios talking about it. Well, we have a chance to go out to some of the different buck poles around the state. This year, we were at Racy's Extreme, which is up in Lapeer, and you know, Mike, uh, what an awesome day we had. That was a great day for you guys. I was sad, Tim, because I was sitting in an administrative meeting, and that was the topic of conversation. Someone scheduled a meeting for the 15th of November, and I told them this was a sacred holiday, and apparently they forgot that, but I was the only one of about 30 administrators in the county that was a hunter. All right. Got well, no sympathy. We had a lot of hunters out that day, and we've got some big bucks here. All right, Tim, we have some great bucks brought in during this segment. Let's start out with Tim Parsons. He shot a 17-pointer, listen to this score, 58 from Schoolcraft. Then we had uh, Craig Pilot with a 10-pointer. His score was 47.38. He comes from Middleville. And then finally, we had Scott Taylor, 13-point buck. The score, 55.62, coming from Kalamazoo, Michigan. We had a great day on opening day up at Racy's Extreme up in Lapeer. They had all the deer hanging. I got way up to look down on the crowd. It was slow for a long time, and then all of a sudden, about 7 o'clock, everybody showed up. It was Christmas at Racy's. My uh, name is Greg Chappell from Fostoria. All right, well, tell me about your hunt there. Hunt was uh, October 22nd. Uh, I had a couple little ones come in, and uh, one took off chasing after doe, and as soon as he took off, this guy jumped in and that's all she wrote. He came in and uh, cracked my pants. He come in about 15 yards and I double lunged him and he went about 70 and there he was. Uh, Brian Getzinger, Lapeer, Michigan. Uh, he came through this morning at 7.30 chasing four does. Uh, went through a swamp, came back through about an hour and a half later following another doe. Uh, I lost him in a swamp. He wandered back out about 50 yards broadside, about 9.30. Jason Roche from Lake Orion. Uh, about 9 o'clock in the morning, I seen this one coming in, chasing a doe. Uh, thought it was going to go away from me, so I gave it a grunt. Next thing I know, the doe and this one popped up over the ridge, still going away from me to the left, so I gave her another grunt. Then they turned towards me, and I grunted again to see if I could get them to stop. They still kept coming. They came in pretty close, so I yelled. He stopped, he was behind a tree, so I still couldn't get the uh, shot off. Gave him a few minutes, he took about four steps out, and I let her rip. I'm with Ray Jr. here at Ray C's, and uh, I tell you right now, it, it took a long time 
<laughs> and then all of a sudden, it was like the floodgates open. Yeah, man, it's like, I guess it's lucky number seven. Seven <laughs> buck poles, you got a rock concert for deer hunters, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. All right, what's all going to get, what, what's been going on here all day? You know what? We put on a buck pole for American Ham Vets. We only team 457, the physically challenged hunters and stuff that we like to help back, and our community's just big into it. We got so much support from so many people. We just put this event on, tried to create the biggest buck pole possible opening day, Lapeer, Michigan. Exactly. I tell you, the deer are lined up. They're coming in. You got the crew over here. They're measuring the deer right now. You've got uh, vendors in the background giving away hats and shirts and all kinds of cool it's things. It's just great stuff all the way around. A lot of community support. And Keep a lot going. of people coming out. And I tell you right now, you can register your buck here all the way through December 31st or doe. So you guys are always a, a big registration point Every for day, us. bring uh, it on. <laughs> all right, quickly, give me Ray C's when the buck pool's not going on. Hey, you know what? We're just a great family operated run show. My parents started in 1981. Um, we try to take care of people, you know, and in Lapeer we make the difference. Come see us for all your power sports needs. All right. Hey, <laughs> all opening right, day, I gotta let him go. All, all right, right, man. Brother. Good to see you. Right. Good deal. Ray you. Jr. at Ray C's Extreme. Well, again, we'd like to thank them for hosting us up there in Lapeer at Ray C's. Uh, we've got more coming up, more interviews from Ray C's. We also have some interviews from down in the Quincy area, talking to Allie Aver about her big buck. And uh, we just want to remind you, q1buckpull.com. You can see all the deer from around the state. We're giving away a Yamaha Grizzly 350 ATV. It's all camo, and all you have to do is enter the contest to be in. Yeah, you know, besides uh, the ATV, there's tremendous prizes. That's all you got to do is register the deer, buck or doe. You have until December 31st. Stay with us. You're watching the Q1 Buck Poll. More bucks when we come back. Back here on the Q1 Buck Poll, and we have more bucks for you to take a look at. And again, we remind you, December 31st is the deadline for registering your deer. We've got big parties planned in uh, late January, also in February. And then March 3rd, we're giving away that ATV at the Soaring Eagle Casino. A lot of people have asked about going there. Uh, also, I can tell you right now is book your hotel room now. There will be big bucks there. And speaking of big bucks, Tim, let's start out with Don Brown. Brought in a 15-pointer, the score 53.62 from Matawan. Then we had Dale Flogger with a 16-pointer. His score was 55 and three quarters coming from Reading. Then we had Shane Springman with an 11-pointer. His score was 49 from Jackson, Michigan. And finally, Brad Eckhart's 12-pointer with a score of 54 coming from Baroque. Now let's go back to opening day at Racy's. We're in Lapeer at Racy's Extreme. It is their annual buck pole, and part of the buck pole is Wheeling Team 457. Ray Brown is with us, and uh, you guys are out here helping us register deer. Uh, let's talk about the event here. Oh, the event is uh, built into a gigantic event where uh, I think there's probably going to be uh, thousands of people here as the day goes on. Got quite a few deer on the buck pole already. Um, they pull in. We got a little circular drive for them to come into this year take care of traffic congestion. We get them uh, measured up uh, under Q1 buck pole standards, uh, get them registered uh, with a nice uh, pen uh, souvenir from the buck pole, and we get them up on that buck pole. Mm -hmm. And part of it is a donation towards Wheelan uh, Team 457. Yeah, uh, Wheelan Team 457 now we're in our uh, seventh year of this buck pole, and um, we get the proceeds from this buck pole. So uh, the community has really jumped on board. A lot of the local businesses and sponsors have sponsored us up. And uh, they're on board with Ray C's and Wheeling Team 457 and Q1 Buck Pole to, to give the best buck pole that I've ever seen. Now let's talk about uh, your organization. Uh, what is the main goal and purpose? Well, the main goal and purpose is to get folks to uh, realize that all they need to do is just unlock their wheelchairs and get out and give us a will to try. If they'll give us a will to try something, then we'll give them uh, hopefully a will to win at whatever they want to do. We, w we want them to uh, realize there's a lot of success out here in the things that they love to do. There's no reason uh, because of a disability um, to just sit back and not do something. There's all kinds of modalities and equipment out here and we have the knowledge um, to get folks out and make sure that uh, we can use every ounce of ability they have. And um, we, we are set up uh, every square inch of, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the United States. There's no reason. All I have to do is make a phone call and we can make a, a hunt happen or a fishing uh, event happen. Um, and, and we also offer a ton of uh, wheelchair sports also. All right, Ray. Hey, thanks. You, Thank you guys you. are doing a great job. Thank you. All right. We're at Racy's Extreme. Stay with us. You're watching the Q1 Buck Bowl. We've got Allie Aver with us here from Quincy, and she brought in a nice big buck. Uh, Allie, now this is a deer um, that was grazed 
uh, before you shot him, right? Yep. All right, and uh, didn't look like it did a whole lot of damage, but tell me about your hunt. Um, I went out in the first thing in the morning, but it was really foggy and I didn't see anything. And we all came in around lunchtime and we had lunch and sat around for a little bit and then we went back out around one. And I sat there until about 10 minutes till dark and I hadn't seen anything. And then he came in through the swamp and he was just, he was walking along the edge of the swamp and then he walked in through a big group of trees and I didn't think he was coming my way. Mm -hmm. So I was putting all my stuff up and he, uh, he came out of a group of trees about 30 yards in front of me and I put my gun up and shot him and he ran about 15 yards and dropped dead. All right, now were you in a tree stand or in a blind? I was in a buck shack. Okay, all right, and uh, is that the way you like to hunt? You like to hunt one of those? Uh, yeah, I hunt tree stand with my bow, but buck shack with a gun. Okay, well this is a good looking deer. Now have you ever seen this deer before? Nope, first nope. time. First time? So you see a lot of people, if you uh, put time in the woods, uh, you do see a lot of first timers. Everybody likes to go to that same spot each time, but uh, you never know. Now, have you guys hunted the same area, the same land a lot? Yep, we hunt the same land every year, mm -hmm. but we don't hunt it unless it's gun season. Usually we don't hunt in the buck shack till gun season. So it's usually a low pressure area. That's why we find a lot of bucks there. All right, so a good looking buck, Ali Avra from Quincy. Tremendous stories from uh, opening day here on the Q1 Buck Poll. And you know, Mike, there's a lot of things going on. People can donate their venison yet. You can also register for lastminutehuntingandfishing.com's giveaway. We're giving away a Saskatchewan deer hunt. So we have a lot of things happening. All you have to do is go to q1buckpoll.com to find out the details. Get that registering done and go out there. There's still plenty of time to bag that big buck. All right, for Mike Big Buck Hofner, I'm Tim Hart. Thanks for being with us this week on the Q1 Buck Poll. Remember, whenever you're out in the woods, stay safe. For the latest on Michigan hunting, pick up the current edition of Woods & Water News, Michigan's premier outdoor publication, available on newsstands or by subscription. Woods & Water News, proud sponsor of the Q1 Buck Poll. We had a lot of hunters out that day, and we've got some big bucks here. Oh, oh! well, we can <laughs> pause that. <laughs> well, you can get to pick that up. <laughs> yeah. We've got some big bucks here. Generally, that is a cue, and then he says, well, coming in from this Well, anyway, I'm said, sorry. We've got some big bucks here. Anyway, I'm like, where are you here? I, I got a little stage fright. <laughs> you, were, you were on such a roll. Yo, hey, we've got some big <laughs> bucks here. Uh, <laughs> there's a big buck. Oh my god, they're everywhere. There's a buck, there's a buck, there's bucks on the floor, they're everywhere.